You're watching The Drawing Zoo. I'm Brittany Roger, and today I'm going to show you how I draw fossils. My Instagram followers voted, and everybody said they are dying to see a fossil video. Lucky for you, I've been on a couple fossil digs, and I have friends at the museum that lent me some really cool material for today's video. At the end of the video, I'll show you a sneak peek of what we're doing next. Today we're talking about lines. First we will do a warm up, then meet the animal, oops, today I mean fossil, then we will draw the animal, I mean fossil. I will be using a pencil and paper, but there are a lot of other materials you can use in this activity. Please make sure to check out our entire playlist for more cool videos. We don't think about it much, but there are so many types of lines. Let's start with something simple and natural. Pressing down with normal pressure, zoop, straight line, I like my sound effects. Then I want to try a lighter line by pressing down lightly. Next I try a line, starting out pushing down hard, but towards the end of the line I lift up my pencil for a swishy motion. You can always pause the video to try it more. To challenge myself, I want to make a line as thin as possible. How do I make a line really dark and thick? Go over and over Pressing the same high. line. That's right, and I can also hold my pencil on the side for a thicker line in one stroke. Ooh. Oh. Wow. But there's not just straight lines. We can do that same exercise with curly lines too. Thick, thin, medium, swishy, holding your pencil on the side. Take some time to experiment with lines and holding your pencil in a different way. When you were experimenting with lines, did you notice that sometimes lines make shapes? Yes! yes. If the line doesn't connect to itself, it is still just a line. It's only a shape when the line closes. Okay. I see that. We use thick lines to show weight or shadow. If you think this thick line looks awkward at the top of the circle, that's because it feels heavy and your eyes naturally want it on the bottom. That was a great warm up. Now let's talk about some fossils. Fossils are so cool. A fossil is a physical thing that you can hold that came from a prehistoric plant or animal. Fossils can be made of footprints, teeth, skin, bones, impressions, feathers, poo. <laughs> I've been on a couple fossil digs with some experts, which was amazing. And I learned so much about digging for extinct species. So here is a piece of rock. It looks totally normal, right? But these rocks have little natural cracks in them. So what we do is we put a wedge right in the crack and give it a little and then, whoa! Ooh, what is it? Now this is not the fossil of a dinosaur. This is the fossil of a brachiopod, which looks a lot like a clam, but it's a different animal. What's really cool is that we have a positive and negative fossil. Here is the, the remnants of the animal itself. And then here, is the impression kind of like a footprint that it left in the rock. Okay, so Henry's gonna join me for this one. Today we're going to talk about two different prehistoric animals. And then I will show you how I draw the Dimetrodon skull. The first animal I'm very excited to tell you about is one of the first dinosaurs we know about called Coelophysis. The word coelophysis means hollow form, 
meaning that the bones were empty on the inside, which made this creature really light on its feet. They could grow up to 10 feet long. Whoa! Coelophysis was bipedal. Bipedal means that the animal walks on two legs. Can you think of any other animals that walk on two legs? Bones. Birds! What's really interesting about those hollow bones, that's what birds have today. And that's why they're able to fly because they're so light. Coelophysis lived in the Triassic period. 221 to 190 million years ago. Wow. Paleontologists are still finding bones of Coelophysis in some of the southwestern United States, but also in South Africa and Zimbabwe. Coelophysis was a carnivore. That means it only ate other animals. What's really wild and cool is that the first dinosaurs showed up after a two million year long rain. Yeah, it rained on planet Earth for two million years. And I was grumpy this morning that I had to take the recycling out in the rain. <laughs> Coelophysis was adapted to living in a drought. This animal was really good at surviving without having access to water. Some of you probably know that I love the Natural History Society of Maryland, and they have a set of dinosaur tracks that were discovered right here in Maryland. And some paleontologists think it was made by Silophysis. The reason that they can't say for sure is because the tracks look like the animal was running, which smears the footprints a little bit and therefore gives people something to debate about. But if the animal had been standing still, we think the tracks could look something like this. Whoa. But I'm not done. 80 million years before the first dinosaurs, there was an amazing creature called Dimetrodon. Wait, before the dinosaurs? Dimetrodon looks like a dinosaur. I mean, come on, it's got all the traits that we think of. It kind of walks like a lizard. It's got that really amazing sail on its back. But Dimetrodon was not a dinosaur. Then what is it? It is what we call a stem mammal. I'll show you. In this picture here, we see the hole in the skull where the eyes go, but there's a hole behind the eye. And dinosaurs had two. Oh! Wow! This is a coyote skull. And you can see here that it has a hole for the eyes, but then it also has the second hole behind the eyes. All mammals have this, including you and me. Ah! I don't know how I feel about that. Wow, that's really cool. I think I need a second to accept that Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. Okay, I'm ready. So mammals and proto-mammals, or stem mammals, are all synapsids, and dinosaurs are diapsids. These are really fancy words that describe what our skulls look like. Another thing that makes the dimetrodon really different are the teeth. <laughs> this is a real fossilized tooth. Whoa! That's so cool! This is the coolest fossil I have ever held in my hand. See, dinosaurs had the same teeth on repeat throughout their whole mouth. Same size, same shape, same curve, same positioning, but Dimetrodon had different sized teeth in different areas of the mouth. Mm. We do too. Can you see how all of our teeth are different? Okay, here's a better example. Here's our coyote. The coyote has incisors, canines, and then molars. Each type of tooth is shaped differently for a different reason. 
so are the Dimetrodon's teeth. Look, can you imagine how big this creature was if this was the canine? Whoa! This animal was about 10 feet long. I'm imagining that this little tooth would have gone right here as an incisor. What do you think? This animal's teeth were also serrated, really similarly to some shark teeth. Serrated means there's itsy bitsy little jagged edges along the teeth to help tear into flesh, which means this animal was a carnivore. <laughs> if you have any interest in learning about more stuff like this, definitely check out the Natural History Society of Maryland. If you're local to Maryland, also check out the events that they have because we are doing some more fossil digs. Now that we met the fossil, it's time to draw the fossil. I'm going to show you how I draw the Dimetrodon skull. First, I like to plan how much space the picture is going to take up on the paper. Then I lightly draw our oval shape. I like to make sure that I start with my biggest shapes first. The next biggest shape is the opening for the mouth. I like to draw it with a sideways S. My lines do not have to be very smooth in order to look believable. The next biggest body part is that opening for the eye. There we go. Then there's that very important hole behind the eye. And luckily for us, it's in the shape of a D. On to the nose. These body parts are getting smaller. This is a really wonky circle. Notice how I have kept my lines very light, but now that I'm happy with my shapes, I want to start drawing my lines in darker. This is a great time to make changes to my lines. Notice how I did not leave enough space for teeth in my jaws. So when I went back over it, I made the jaw a little lower. And then I made the chin pointier. Each side of the bottom jaw is one piece of bone, whereas reptiles have multiple bones in their lower jaw, which is how animals like snakes can swallow their food whole. But that's a topic for another video. I'm also making my lines a little more jagged to look more like the picture. You can always pause the video if you need more time. Now I'm finally drawing those important teeth. I noticed that the top front teeth vary in size from biggest to smallest. What shape am I using for these teeth? Triangles. Triangles, awesome. I'm making sure to leave some space before I start the next teeth. There's the tiny one and the big one. I'm also trying to keep these teeth a little curved. They get smaller the further they go back, stopping under the eye. As we move to the lower jaw, let's notice that there is quite a bit of space in between each tooth. The first four teeth point forward and then they start curving back. After I finish the rest of the teeth, I go back in with a long wavy line to make it look like the teeth are really attached to the skull. The skull might look like one bone, but it's actually many bones fused together. So here I am drawing the line that shows where the serangular and articular bones merge. I'm using really jagged lines to make a tilted Y shape with a little S. Now what's a little extra is drawing a piece of the skull that we see through the opening of the mouth. This is going to make it look 3D. And to show that this is the inside of the skull, I am using a technique called stippling, which is really fun. Lots of little dots. Next, we have some lines in between the two holes, the juggle and squamosal bones. Then I draw some wrinkly type lines around the eye to show that there's a ridge. If you touch your eyebrow, you can feel those ridges. Notice that I'm also keeping these lines thinner than the outline. To show the underside of that eye, I do a quick swipe 
at the top and fill in the gap with that stippling technique. I love stippling. Lastly, we're going to do the nasal and maxilla area, which is another part of the skull we all have. First, I do a jagged U shape. It connects from the middle of the top of the head to the eye. And then from the middle of it, I can only describe it as a really flimsy lightning rod all the way down to the nose hole. And then we have a really small jagged line connecting it to the jaw and eye. Just like we did with the eye hole, we have some stuff inside the nose bone to draw. I do a quick little C shape on the left hand side and then upside down Y and a little circle on each side of that Y. And then you guessed it, we stipple, 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 stipple. Speaking of seeing behind the bones, there is one last little piece. I did a check mark shape and fill that in with stipples. And then I do two parallel lines below that and fill that in with stipples. Now I just really want to add a title. Dimetrodon. Now notice that the skull can actually seem see-through because it's the same color as the paper. One thing that we can do to make this really fun and stand out is fill in the entire background. When we change the direction that the lines go in, it makes the whole drawing much more energetic. Feel free to use another color or another material for this. Our goal was not to all have matching drawings. Our goal was to practice using our different types of lines to show something cool that we learned. We think that Dimetrodon was one of the first stem mammals or proto-mammals. The skulls of some species show small little pits around the mouth. Cats, dogs, and other mammals have these too. Does that mean earlier animals had hair? I think one of the reason drawing extinct animals is so fun is because part of it is observing what we see in front of us, but another part of it is definitely using our imagination. Alrighty, I'm satisfied with our drawings. Great job. Watch till the end for a, watch till the end to. You won't leave me alone. I have work to do. It's really hard to do this with you in my lap. Love you. Another thing that makes plant eaters could eat I told you at the end of the video, if you stuck around, I would show you a sneak peek of what we're doing next. Are you ready? Bam! Did you figure out what it is? Make your guess in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe to be the first to know when we launch the new video.